Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on setting up a web portal on the SIA network. Now, what is a web portal? A web portal effectively acts as an intermediary between the user and the SIA network hosts. Currently, the host cannot send data directly to someone in, let's say, a web browser. So you need an intermediary server to deal with. Also, a quick note before we start, Everything we do today is going to be in the command line, unlike the last two tutorials, because you're going to want to do this on a remote computer. Now you can run a web portal on your own computer, but like, don't. And also, there is no GUI for this. It, it's all command line. Now, a quick thing, you can run your own node on your computer in portal mode so you can download links from Skynet, but this isn't that. We're setting up a node on a server using Nginx to create a web portal for users. Also, one more quick note before the actual tutorial takes place. For the actual server hardware you're going to want, you're going to want at least 8 gigabytes of RAM, at least two cores, preferably dedicated cores, not the cores, at least 60 gigabytes of SSD storage. Please use an SSD, don't use a hard drive. If you use a hard drive, you will in tandem make your web portal unusable and also kill the drive you're using due to the very, very high amounts of random reads and writes that SIA does. And generally at least around a full duplex 100 megabit per second connection and a metered bandwidth. Of course, that latter category of the amount of bandwidth you need and the connection speed highly depends on you. It doesn't actually matter that much for running the side instance itself. But if you're going to be running a community portal, please get unmetered just so you don't get overcharged for it. Okay, let's get into it. So first you're going to want to open up PowerShell or any other bash terminal that you want to use. Then go to your hosting provider and find the IP address of your VPS or dedicated server. Then do ssh root at that IP address. Once logged in, do apt update ampersand ampersand apt install sudo ampersand ampersand apt upgrade. This will make sure everything's up to date. Also keep in mind this is for Debian. It will maybe also work in Ubuntu, but this tutorial is just for Debian. Keep that in mind. Once that's all done, do add user user. Create the password that you want and type in or don't type in all the details for the user, say yes, go along. Then user mod hyphen a capital G pseudo user and then user mod hyphen a capital G system D journal user. Now what you're basically doing is adding this user to groups. The first one adds your user to the pseudo group so you can do super user do commands, which is uh, very useful. And the second one actually isn't necessary, but whatever. Then you're gonna to wanna to do exit, leave the SSH instance. Once you've left, you're gonna to wanna to do SSH user at that IP address. Also keep in mind the reason we're using user is because a lot of the setup scripts for this use the name user just because they decided to. So it's just best to use that user. Then you're gonna to wanna to do sudo apt install git. And we need git so we can clone the repository for the Skynet web portal. Then you're going to do git clone github.com slash nebulous lab slash Skynet hyphen web portal. Now it's probably a great time to open up the Skynet web portal github page just so you can copy these commands manually and you don't have to type out what my voice is saying because that's kind of a pain. The written guide on here is pretty good but it has some uh, issues that I have to work around to get this thing working. So after cloning the repository, you're going to want to navigate into the Skynet web portal folder then, from the README on the Skynet Web Portal setup script page, you're going to want to copy the first setup script. So, just run that and let it run its course. It'll do its thing, and then the last thing at the end will fail, saying, cannot connect a bus or something like that. Basically, what's happening here is Dbus is being a garbage fire like normal. So, how do you fix this? Well, what I've found is that at least my Debian installation is missing some packages. So, you're going to want to install Dbus, Dbus user sessions, and Dbus x11. Then you're going to want to do exit to leave the VPS. Then it'll log you out. So you're going to want to log back in after a couple seconds with user at your IP address and go back in. Now, if you do log in CTL, enable linker, it'll work. Now, what is this? This basically allows system services to run while the user isn't logged in. And this is kind of important because most of the time when your web portal is running, you're not going to be doing stuff in the machine. It'll be running by itself. So this is very important to work. Then also you can just do login CTL to make sure you have a user session running. And that fixes that issue. Due to system services not being the method used to run Syed for us, we're going to be skipping the second setup script and going straight to the third. 
The second setup script, all it does is set up services and all that kind of stuff, and we don't need that. The third one, though, what it does is it sets up Docker for Nginx, Caddy, and some other stuff that helps the web server work. So just copy it in from the GitHub page, paste it in, and let it run. Now do cd dot dot to navigate out of the current directory to go to your home directory. Then do sudo apt install docker compose. Docker compose is like docker, but slightly different. It effectively allows you to run programs inside virtual containers, but without the overhead of a VM. So once you do that, you're going to want to do nano docker hyphen compose dot yml and then paste in the file that I'll put in the description. Effectively what this does is it initializes an upload and a download node for Syed. Also, despite being able to set the API password and the wallet password to literally anything you want, please don't just set them to password. Uh, set them to something more secure. It's not that big of a deal because you have to be on the local machine for it really to matter, but like, just, just don't. Then navigate out of that with Control X and then save it, and then do sudo docker compose up dash d. The dash d right there makes it run in detached or headless mode, which means that it'll run without taking up your terminal so you can do other stuff without having to SSH into a new window, which is pretty nice. Then once those are launched up, you're going to want to do nano tilde forward slash dot bash rc to go into your bash rc, then scroll down to the bottom. and add these three lines in. These three lines effectively activate the environment file that you're gonna create later and allow you to interact with Syed through Syac, which is inside the Docker container. Then when you go out, you're gonna to wanna to do source tilde forward slash dot bash rc. It'll say the environment file doesn't exist, but that's fine, we can do that later. Once that's been sourced, it's time to initialize these wallets. So do Syac wallet init, and it'll give you your seed. A seed is a 28 word randomly generated string that secures your wallet. If you lose this string, you will lose your wallet. You can never get it back. There's no recovery or password thing. So save this in a secure spot. For me, I'm gonna be putting it in my LastPass account. Then once you do that, you're also gonna do psych hyphen upload wallet in it as well to create a new wallet for that one. Then once again, save this seed. Then once you've done that, you're gonna to wanna to do psych wallet change password, paste in your seed, and then type in the password that you put in for the wallet password in the docker-compose.yml file. You're gonna want the same one so it'll auto unlock and you don't have to type in your password every time docker-compose launches Syed. And then do the same thing for Syed upload, wallet change password, paste in your seed, type in your new password, and you're good. Now time to generate some wallet addresses so we can, you know, send Syed coin to them, which is kind of important. So you're gonna to wanna to do Syac wallet unlock, it should auto unlock, and then do Syac wallet address. This will generate a new address. Now you're gonna to wanna to save this to a secure location. It's not nearly as sensitive as a seed. If someone else gets your seed, they get everything. But if someone else gets your wallet, well, they can send you money. I know, a travesty. But I'd still keep it in a safe location. Then do Syac upload wallet unlock, Syac upload wallet address to generate another address and then save this once again. Now that you have wallets and they have addresses, it's time to sync to the blockchain. Now, if you heeded my recommendations and are a sane person and got an SSD for your server, it should take around uh, three to six hours to sync to the blockchain. It, it depends on a myriad of factors, but that's a general estimate. But gladly, you can bootstrap this and make it happen in about 30, 40 minutes. So what you're gonna wanna do is go to sciastats.info slash consensus, then right click on the download consensus.zip and copy link address. Then go over to your shell window and do in the home directory, w, get, or curl, depending on what you like, and then paste in that link. Now give it some time to download. Once it's been downloaded, you're going to want to do sudo docker compose down from the home directory. This is because we're going to be doing maintenance inside the docker images and if it's running while doing that, it could cause issues. Now, you're gonna wanna do unzip, then the zipped folder's name, and give it a second to inflate. Okay, now that that has been decompressed, you're gonna wanna remove the zip file. It's nine gigabytes, and you're not gonna be needing that anymore. Then navigate into the consensus folder. Then move the consensus file back up to your home directory. Then move back into the home directory and remove the consensus folder. Now, 
copy the consensus file, consensus.db, to Saya Skynet download consensus with pseudo permissions. Then, once again with pseudo permissions, copy consensus db from Saya Skynet download consensus to Saya Skynet upload consensus. Now the copy will take a bit because it is a 20 gigabyte file. Just give it a second to load. Now that the consensus has been copied, it's time to launch Syed. Do sudo docker compose up dash d like we did before to run it in headless mode, then give it a sec and let it launch. Once it's launched, clear it and run Syac or Syac upload. It'll say the module is still loaded. Now this is happening because Syed has to go through everything that has happened previously on the blockchain to figure out what's happening now because that's how well it's in the blockchain. Works. So this is going to take some time. Also, if you run top to see what processes are running, you'll see that it'll be burning one to two cores per instance and it'll probably eat up as much as it can get. It's very CPU intensive to go through the blockchain to see what happened. So this can take around 20 minutes if each instance gets a core or two. Now, while that's happening, it's a great time to send some crypto to your wallet. Sending on the chain takes 20 minutes to an hour, so doing it now is kind of perfect. There are many ways to acquire Sciacoin. You can use something like Binance or Kraken, which are big centralized cryptocurrency exchanges, or you can use something like Transact, which is super easy and you don't need to verify your identity. Or if you want, you could just trade Sciacoin with a friend. Personally, I'm just gonna be sending Sciacoin to the wallets we generated earlier for my own Sci UI instance that I have on my desktop, just to make it simple. Now, one last thing to keep in mind while you're waiting for all this stuff to send and load, you're gonna need a domain for your portal. Now, you can buy a .xyz or a .club domain for a dollar, or you can spend $10,000 in a .com. It really doesn't matter. All you need to know is that you're gonna have to add DNS records for A and C name. A is going to be the IP address of the server and C name is going to be the domain name for the server. Those take a while to propagate so you might actually want to do that before any of the setup stuff in general. But again that's up to you. And now it's time to finish setting up Syed. Now that both of the wallets have synced you can run Syed and Syed upload without issues so you're going to want to set an allowance. Keep in mind you're going to want to keep around 25 kill of Syed in your wallet at all times when running the port despite your allowance being much less. That's just uh, for safety I don't know. So, do Syac renter set allowance, and then make your allowance 10 kilo Sia, and then do default, default, eight weeks, 500 gigabytes of expected storage, 500 gigabytes of expected upload, and then five terabytes of expected download. Now, of course, these can change if you're using a private portal and you have your own projected usage, that's just a recommendation. Then do the default redundancy, and you're done with that. Now it's time to turn Syac into an actual portal node so it can read Skylinks. So what you're gonna wanna do is Syac renter set allowance, hyphen hyphen payment hyphen contract hyphen initial hyphen funding 10 Sciacoin. Now what does that mean? Effectively what you're saying is I will create a contract with any host as long as the contract price is below 10 Sciacoin. This is just to keep hosts from charging like 10,000 Sciacoin to make a contract and completely scamming a bunch of portals. Once you do that it'll start generating contracts with as many hosts as possible. This does take a while. Each block, which is about 10 minutes on average, can only form 10 contracts, so it's about a contract per minute. In total, there's about 300-ish hosts on the network that are accepting contracts. So, if you do the math, that will take around 300 minutes or 5 hours to create all the contracts. So that does take quite a bit of time. Also, keep in mind, you do not want to do payment contract initial funding on Syac Upload. You only want to do that on Syac, because you don't need to on the other one. And then you're going to want to set your allowance on Syac Upload to the same as Syac. Just remember, don't put it in portal mode. Now you can quickly check to make sure that portal mode has been activated on your Syac wallet by doing Syac Renter V or Syac Wallet Contracts and check to make sure 10 contracts have been made. 10 contracts should be made almost immediately after the wallet has been formed, on average around five minutes. Crazy, right? We're nearly there. What you're gonna need to do is first, turn your API password into base64 by doing printf quote colon your API password close quote do pipe base64. That'll encode it into base64. Or then you're gonna to to navigate to Skynet web portal and do nano dot env this will set up the environment then you're going to need to put in domain name email address and the sia api authorization token is the thing you just generated you don't need to put anything in quotes just set them to equals once you've done that you can control x save go out and finally we can start up the server 
All you gotta do is sudo docker compose up dash d just like you did in your home directory, but remember do this in your Skynet web portal directory. And then this will download, install, set up, configure, and launch Nginx, Caddy, and the other stuff needed to run this. Now it's gonna take a good bit of time for everything to get set up, but once it is, all you gotta do is go on the internet and navigate to the address that you have your web portal at. As long as everything's propagated and your address is online, it'll work just like this. And that's pretty much it. It is a bit of work to set up a web portal, but Saya is really cool and having a content distribution network like this is amazing. Anyway, I hope you guys had fun following along with this and I'll see you guys next time.